Hi guys, welcome to another episode of JDM Masters and in today's program we are going to present to you a little Q&A session so um, we're here in my room where I have uh, my collection of uh, lots of little books, card catalogues and just um, things that I've been collecting over the years and these are the things that are actually um, my resource materials um, where I use to as a base to collect information and also uh, that's where uh, we use that and present it uh, talking about different cars and specs and so on. Also uh, I've got many questions in the comments and first of all I'd like just to thank everyone who has supported and watched the series. The objective of this channel is to present to you all things JDM, namely Japanese cars, the car culture, the tuning scene, um, classic, neoclassic Japanese cars, uh, especially from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, which is very popular with many fans around the world, myself included. So uh, we are going to go on and uh, do a, little, a lot of different themes. And uh, so far what we've done as we've covered um, regular cars which we try to find uh, as close to factory spec as normal so that people can actually enjoy the uh, specs and you know just the factory performance uh, how it was meant to be driven how it was designed with the engineers um, intention in mind so uh, I've got a lot of questions uh, in the comments and also privately on my Instagram uh, you can follow me here uh, Captain Bradford why did we start this channel and what, what are the objectives so basically I'll just tell you a little bit about, about my background I studied automotive engineering uh, specializing in chassis and also uh, drivetrains and um, I've had the opportunity to uh, be on the rally team uh, and did logistics uh, as an engineer and mechanic um, and then I really wanted to drive. Uh, that was really just my first thing that um, when I was, you know, growing up, uh, watching uh, racing and uh, especially largely influenced by WRC uh, in the 90s. Um, that was something that I really wanted to do. Just more than it is, I love cars, so I started you know, researching a lot and studying. And just throughout the years, um, being involved in the car industry, uh, I had the opportunity to also participate in, in rallies, mainly Group N. Uh, with Mitsubishi and also did some circuit racing. I was also a automotive journalist so I had the chance to um, properly know how to like review cars, uh, looking at specs and just testing different things and talking about you know, those various aspects. And so over the years, um, especially when I came to Japan, uh, it's really cool because I you know I like Japanese cars, I like JDM cars a lot. So um, I always feel that if you want to know information, it's always best thing to do is to go right to the source. And so, manufacturers' catalogs, uh, official information, but also uh, Japan is really good for uh, producing information, fact magazines that are highly, highly detailed. I'm going to have a look at it uh, in a little bit. So this is the basis of uh, our objective with uh, with JDM Masters. Uh, I also grew up being largely influenced by uh, programs like Top Gear and uh, Best Motoring Hot Version and just the way it's presented, you know, they review the cars new and of course, you know, maybe in the future we might have the chance to uh, take, you know, different cars, um, test them on the circuit but I thought perhaps, you know, if we test them in a real world where it's actually closer to people who would uh, buy these cars and, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of more realistic inside view of that. And so sometimes, uh, you know, as we're doing these tests, um, we try and do a lot of research as much as possible. But then sometimes, you know, certain things, small things do get missed out. So um, for those of you who actually notice it and point it out in the comments, um, really thank you for that. And we just, you know, try to keep on improving as we go along. All right, guys. So um, I've got my little setup here. Uh, this is just, you know, uh, a collection of things that... Um, are very meaningful to me uh, as a car enthusiast and um, someone who loves JDM and so there's many different aspects of the car culture uh, coming from Japan and so you know the word JDM is a very collective term for anything that comes from Japan the source being Japan so as we mentioned in our first earlier talk video uh, in the car with Japonic 
So JDM actually means Japanese domestic market model. You can also have like a USDM, so United States domestic model. They want to differentiate it by have, you know the same manufacturer having different models with different specifications, sometimes even completely different engines or drive trains, or sometimes some certain models are were not available. And in the 80s and the 90s, um, Japan actually manufacturers kept a lot of special models, uh, specs, uh, in their home country, cars like the Skyline. And now I know that certain models of Skylines uh, were exported to countries like, uh, like Australia, some to uh, United Kingdom. But really, these were never meant to be sold as a mass market car. I think they tried a couple of models and they were basically Japanese models which were homologated to uh, specs of that certain country. And certain cars like this GTR, for example, uh, was sold in small numbers in Australia, the R32, and uh, converted UK models and some to in countries like Singapore, but largely they were unavailable to most of the world. Uh, some model, earlier models of the Lancer Evolution, the Impreza STI, and even certain special RX-7 FD models uh, like the RZ the Type R and the, the RZ, uh, the Civic Type R, original, the, the Integra Type R, although that was available, there was still a JDM model. So all these, you know, became very, very desirable. Um, people knew it through Gran Turismo, um, same as myself, I was very influenced by that. But also through um, media like um, Initial D, you know, watching those, uh, anime and you know just, just discovering what toge uh, mountain roads is the street racing scene but also um, you know the classic models that were displayed there uh, best motoring and these are the things perhaps uh, you guys who are watching um, now you know probably find it on on YouTube and you know there's a lot of new uh, channels that are actually showing best motoring uh, by the official publisher actually have a series that they're actually reprinting in small um, sections uh, with, with cars so you can watch that I actually watched a lot of these uh, in the 90s as they come out I got them through a source and uh, option magazine and so all these things you know uh, was the early basis for how I got to got to know about um, Japanese cars and the Japanese market okay so without further ado I'm just going to show you a couple of my resource materials uh, they're basically uh, books and catalogs that I have been collecting um, for the past 20 years or so. So, without further ado, first I'd like to show you my collection of catalogs. And so I've actually bunched them up uh, by maker. I've got Toyota here, I've uh, got Honda, I've got Nissan, Mitsubishi, Subaru, Mazda. Um, most of these are just original catalogs from the Japanese market. So just to show you a few. So for example, here is the Toyota MR2 SW20 and there were many editions uh, throughout the years and um, I have here the original 1989 uh, catalog and really really beautiful uh, photos and you know like flip out displays and um, here it clearly lists uh, the model, the grade and the GG, GT GT Limited and these beautiful photos and you can see what kind of equipment that it came with from the factory and this is really good for collectors now who want to check out if the car that they're buying a lot of um, collectors now like to buy cars that are in full stock condition because uh, having all the original equipment actually um, increases the value um, you know even in Japan uh, used cars they the cars that are completely normal or stock with low mileage would actually have more value than um, ones that have too much modification. I really like this one here. It's a separate section when the MR2 came out. It's a technical note and it's really brilliant. It shows you diagrams, uh, cross sections of the car, uh, the chassis, how they modif how they designed it with, this, with CAD and uh, the layout you can see here. Um, just you know, like see-through cutaways and the 3S GTE engine and a lot of I can read Japanese so I can check that you know all these technical specs and details so this is you know really uh, my resource material uh, to to check on these cars of course you know sometimes we don't remember all of it so uh, it's always good to go back and check on these things so this is really my treasure even things like this you know uh, are kept uh, the original price list from when it was new 
and um, it's very interesting to see how prices have increased so here you go like that really really nice catalogs some of you are gonna love this this is the Cor um, AE80 series Corolla and this is where you have the AE86 this is for the Corolla 11 and there's so many different specs which are most of the ones available now still the A86 with the 4AG 1.6 liter engine but back then it was all these different grades right uh, 1.5 the A85 and you know stripped down you know um, basic versions and of course the four door this is from the 80s and just, just look at that uh, you know the fashion and uh, the, just just the style the thinking of um, of how to market cars you know it's really really excellent I also have here the Toyota Supra JZ A80 really beautiful silver shiny catalog and look at that wow I love all these this, 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 these photos but most interestingly um, you can see just a small little tiny differences maybe the steering wheel um, I think the US models were quite similar but um, it's having a look over here uh, of course the equipment's probably all different and uh, just small little details uh, or how they call it in Japan and what I also love is to check this this bits you got the, uh, the price list and also the uh, genuine accessories catalog so if you find a stock car that comes with um, certain equipment and you can just you know, I can just refer to this and see if like there's different stickers or a you know, different emblem um, and just to check if all these equipment uh, was ticked off the option box by the original owner a lot of um, Japanese actually still keep these cars so you know they might have bought them originally uh, in the 90s and uh, from time to time just just going around the neighborhood uh, for example there is this elderly couple who still have uh, RZ JZ, uh, JZ A80 and it seems to have like the optional you know stickers and um, like the little like a like a sort of like a, a sunshade um, sticker I really like this one. This is the catalog for uh, the Toyota Century, and so being a you know top most luxurious car, it's it's just like a a book. It's got its own case and hardcover catalog. Even the um, the price list is on a very you know glossy paper. Look at that, the emblem that's had um, handcrafted by artisans. It's just looking something like out of a, a card that you would find when you go to a invited been invited to a Japanese wedding. Just this brilliant high glossy catalog um, showing all the details, and you have the V12 engine, just really really beautiful. So, um, what's also important um, is in Japan, uh, the navigation system is usually built into. The cars some of them are option and not and it's really useful to have a look at this and what kind of cd player what kind of um you know options they have and cars like this are just you know highly customizable um sometimes it does add value but some people who look for used cars are really particular about what kind of spec um they want and you know rich technical details on the on the components and the equipment and mechanism um you know and toyota's are toyota toyota is really detailed about their uh, design and manufacturing uh, process and all the technology as well. High, highly detailed. Japanese really like a lot of technical details in their catalogs and so Japanese car catalogs and I just really no slouch for that at all. And over here, for example, I have the R32 GTR original catalog. Uh, this one's a bit scruffy. I got this on the cheap because uh, the really good condition ones, even the catalogs are well, very sought after. Um, cost like six seven times more but I got this just purely for um, collection value and just data reference and as I as with the Toyota ones uh, it lists out all of the mechanism and how it works so using this as a base um, to understand how the mechanism works uh, in these cars and the differences between the uh, different model years but also I have certain books like this so this is the GTR owners book uh, I've taken care of several GTRs uh, in my work and so I tried to acquire these books and highly highly detailed uh, written by journalists and uh, and 
pro shops who know the car very well. Here you can see how they show diagrams of all the different turbos from the 32, uh, the N1 into the 34 and explain it really, really in great detail. Uh, these minute differences, they show you the race cars and the group, group A cars, you know, uh, the uh, BNR 34 uh, was more like a factory base, a uh, Nürburgring runner. And this section over here, like an interview with the engineer, Watanabe-san, who was chief engineer also for uh, Nissan at the time, and just the mechanism, how HiCast works. And this section here, oh, and this is a very famous man, Tamura Hiroshi, who is now the chief uh, engineer in charge of the GTR project. And over here, just a lot of details on um, each part, like the electronical system and just the differences really really useful uh, especially when you go car hunting and you own one and he even some diagram to uh, taken from the service manual uh, the little different clips that they use it's amazing uh, I you know it's better than Haynes manuals sometimes because um, Haynes manuals don't really cover a lot of uh, old JDM models and you know how to take apart the, the console and everything just all these details it's super great and get all these books at um, a used bookstore called Hard Off. Funny name, yes, but um, you can find a lot of these books here in Japan. So if you do come down to Japan and you try to find a book off, um, Hard Off, you can find in the section here. This one's really great. It has a lot of original press photos from Nissan themselves. Uh, here's on the 34, and um, more Group A stuff, and uh, a lot of technical data, uh, the specs here. And here's really interesting, for example, um, the BNR 34. Uh, all the total production uh, numbers and it also shows you like by spec so there's like 43,390 BNR32s ever produced and um, much much less for the, uh, for the BNR33 and here um, you know the Zenki Koki so the facelift the mid model the, uh, the final model all the differences limited editions uh, but of course you know for the GTRs there's a lot of different books for um, fan books and it's highly highly detailed so um, always useful to check up on these and um, just all the different parts how the GTR's RB26 is uh, basically you know engineered for for racing and, and um, all the components just fantastic fantastic stuff a different book here on the Subaru Impreza series so this this is really great it has like all the special um, STI models the 22B uh, a lot of details here, kind of similar to the book I found in the STI Mitaka Gallery which video you can check right here. The uh, infamous first S201 with their really interesting body kit. And then also the regular models from the first STI version all the way up and it shows all the different uh, variations, uh, small details how it came up from the factory, um, even sometimes including some performance specs. So um, this series here, of course I have one for the Lancia Evolution. Uh, this is the book I use in reference for one of our videos, the Rally Cars, uh, Group A, and um, just all the details about um, the specification um, for homologation and all the parts in tuned cars and race cars. But this is also showing um, each model, Evolution 1, and all the different colors that codes all the equipment level here so really really great source that uh, i use as reference and on this section here it explains all the mechanism the cylinder head um, the difference in the spec just like the gtr one uh, my favorite uh, honda civic type r ek9 zenki Koki, and um, all the different different ones i've tried to collect as many as i can i integra type r uh, the, the, the special RX model, the 98 model. I even have like uh, the Euro, uh, the Accord Euro R, a special model that has the same K20 engine and was not available in many markets. So catalogs like this, but also um, I try to keep up with current models. So I go to the dealer and get um, catalogs of of the new cars so that I can uh, keep myself informed of uh, the new technology and the differences mainly you know engine power specification weight dimensions 
But also, um, I also have books like this. This is a special Honda Civic uh, history book, and it has just about everything uh, from old magazines, articles, and they show uh, very in-depth, like test data, uh, and very complete. This is made by Car Graphic, which is the most famous and uh, the oldest car magazine in Japan. It's a really, really detailed, kind of like an um, auto car in the UK. And, um, you know, books like this, really, really useful. You guys can see my Mitsubishi collection as well. I have uh, seven, Tommy Mackin edition, six, five, four, three, two, <laughs> one. <laughs> and you know just all the details right here cars that are not just sports cars uh, I've got here the Air Trek Space Gear Diamante which is the Sigma and also sometimes these motor show brochures which um, easily show you for that year what kind of models they have so a lot of books like this the catalogs yes but also this is a series uh, that's still ongoing. It's called Motofan, and it's very, very thorough. Uh, when a new model comes out, um, they test it. And what's really great about this series of books is uh, they do the typical uh, road test and maybe circuit test, um, and they give a lot of information, uh, and they talk with the engineers, they cooperate with the maker, and find out you know, like the development story as well, and the, in the comparison with the rivals are here, the R33 when it came out with the Supra and the FD, also with uh, European contemporaries like the E36 M3, but this is really great, just these cross-section stuff, materials used in the front pipe, for example, the catalyzer, just these design details from engineers, and some of this actually um, didn't make it into the, you know, even the catalog, there's more information uh, in these in these books, so I got a lot of these series. I try to you know find them from the the, um, the used store. Uh, for example, here a very detailed schematic of the super high cast system and uh, the purpose of certain parts, so you know I can really check on it. This is a really great section because of the design story. They actually talk to all the staff members who are on the team. Uh, these people, you know, for example, the interior designer, C A D designer, the, uh, the the clay modeler, and how they came up with the different shapes and. Um, being a uh, car engineer, this is very interesting for me because we can see and appreciate how all these small details of um, of these cars are uh, being, you know, well thought through and designed. And that's the reason also why I'm quite, you know, reluctant to change um, things or modify uh, the car that's outside the design too much, you know, because I really want to appreciate how the the cars were designed through a lot of R&D money spent and time uh, by the engineers and you try to you know appreciate it and uh, enjoy it as it is so you know this is also very interesting the R33 GTR was the first uh, Japanese sports car to do under eight minutes so in the 90s this was something that was very remarkable that's a big achievement also one of the reasons why uh, Skyline GTR uh, really got its fame in the context of the 90s so a really great series. Another series that is really cool, uh, and a lot of people who uh, follow uh, JDM tuning scene will know this book. It's called Hyper Rev, and um, for this example here is the number two book for the Civic Integra. I have another Integra one, but this is for the Civic and the CRX, and um, of course showing more design story. For example, the Civic Type R EK9. Uh, the same. But what's important is also to show the tuning. So here is a showcase of all the different popular tuners, for example, Spoon, uh, Phase, you have June, Top Fuel, Monster. There are also other magazines that I have, which are really interesting. For example, here is a magazine by uh, Car Top, and this is from 1996. And really interesting, you can see here a beautiful original advertisement for, uh, this is the, the FTO, and um, just, I love the design, the layout, the Integra Type R DC2 here, they first came out. And what's great about this is the, they take it to test on the scuba circuit. And you can see here at the time, um, the, the 
got for the original car uh, when it came out all of the technical details um, and the way it performs d um, done by racing drivers and um, test data 0 to 100 for under 5 seconds for the R33 GTR wow that's, that's fantastic even the NSX here um, they tested on the time the NSX R did 1.5 so let's see this is interesting right the R33 GTR did 1 minute 3 0.58 seconds whereas the NSX was I was actually slower at 1 minute 5 so the top car at 99.6 was the R33 GTR really really fast and here we even have the NSX R0 to 100 was 5.24 seconds and a lot of these cars the Supra uh, the RX-7 uh, WRX STI and the Type RA the MR2 uh, Z32 Twin Turbo, Celica GT4 WRC, Legacy Evo 3, which was actually pretty fast, but um, on the circuit, somehow like a tight circuit like Scuba, um, really difficult to get a good time because of the balance of the highs and low speed corners. But they even test like you know, um, normal cars. So here we have the Integra Type on the 2 liter category, Mirage, um, and you know, just even like normal sedans. Here the Galant and Accord. Uh, we have the you know luxury cars as well, and they even tested like uh, SUVs. I don't know why, but just to give like a reference. So really great source of of data that's period correct, and um, just was lucky to find these books. And here, like you know, even show you how the WRX was tested rigorously at the Nurburgring. Uh, something that a lot of Japanese manufacturers didn't take the effort to do uh, during that time but um, they did you know the MR2 another magazine that I, I like a lot is the Jay's Tipo and here uh, two copies well, one is showing the uh, the EK4 Civic when it first came up before the Type R and you have these original advertisements for parts you hear Nismo Aero parts for the R33 and um, just also a lot of information when the car was new and um, what's really great is uh, not only have that but also interviews with racing drivers and um, here's the um, famous best motoring uh, presenter uh, Kinoshita Takayuki one of my favorites and all like uh, very very detailed about the past models and what it was called uh, the different specs just to go into history even you know, parts and um, racing news and this is really interesting. You can see here it's a used car section, and you can see the prices for that time period. This is 1995, for example, and you can just make a comparison with how different prices are uh, now and you know compared to back then. So, for example, right? Let's see here. You could buy in 1995 a three-liter Supra JZA70 for. 660,000 yen, which is about 6,000 US dollars. But now it's like three or four times the price for a good one, you know. News, uh, outdoor stuff, rally news. And here's my favorite section. It's the goods section where you can see um, the uh, merchandise from um, official merchandise from different makers like Master Speed here, Nismo, and uh, really, really great stuff. Here's another issue. Um, you know, from the back, you see more used car prices, um, mini car models. And oh, yeah, speaking of mini car models, I have a little collection here. If you guys would like me to review it uh, next time, uh, let us know in the comments. So, here is a collection of my little 164 scale, and over here is the premium. We have the 22B and the uh, limited from way back uh, the, as you can see here this is the S30 maybe modeled off the One Gun Midnight special initial D a Kyosho Altezza and this is the highly detailed uh, 164 scale of the new vintage limited which is uh, right here and I have several of my favorite models you have the Civic Type R Integra and um, the SIR, the EG6, EF9, and the EVO5, the FDRX7, and here's a Tamiya 164 limited edition, and here are uh, 164 uh, rally car collection, 
um, all in order. I managed to collect all of the Lancer Evolution Importer models, the Corolla WRC, the uh, Legacy Impreza, and really cool, right? You can see some of these models in our video. And a little model of my Civic Type R in silver here, and also have a couple of these other mini car from Tommy Car. So I've got my collection of Initially and uh, Over Rev, and of course, One Gun Midnight and MF Ghost. So these are very important because they are good references for our Initial D real life comparison series. And just a couple of stuff here that I have on my wall uh, for just collector stuff. So guys, that was just a quick review of uh, stuff in my room and all my resource material, the catalogs, the books that uh, I use. Let me know in the comments uh, if you'd like me to do certain reviews and maybe uh, a, a talk, an in-depth talk about um, technical stuff of cars or uh, mechanisms or like you know, how to tune cars. There's a lot of great ideas and comments from, um, from, from people who watched our videos. So once again, thank you for all your support and um, let's enjoy um, the things to come in the future. And um, until next time, peace out guys.